Okay, so your heart's broken. You sit around moping, crying, crying. Say, so you even thinking about dying? Well, before you do anything rash, dig this. Everybody plays a fool sometimes. There's no exception to the rule. It may be factual, it may be cruel, but I ain't lying. Everybody plays the fool. Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do -do. Falling in love is such an easy thing to do. And there's no guarantee that the one you love is going to love you. Oh, heaven earth is all you see. You're out of touch with reality. And love runs deeper than any ocean and clouds your mind with emotion. Hey, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening to you. I hope y'all remember that song by my brothers. The main ingredient with the lead vocals done by Mr. Cuba Gooden Sr. Rest in peace, my brother. Um... I love that song, and I'm sure a lot of y'all out there, too, remember that and love it as well. All right, listen, y'all, I want, I want to share with y'all a post-Civil War poem uh, by from black folk. Y'all probably done heard it before, but I'm going to give it meaning to where it came from. It's a black post-Civil War poem. So this is a poem that was written after the Civil War. We ain't what we ought to be. We ain't what we gonna be. We ain't what we wanna be. But thank God we ain't what we used to be. Mm. And um, unfortunately, um, we weren't any of these things because of a society dominating us and making us the blood supply of their existence. It's just that simple. They're the vampires, we're the prey. Okay? So that's why we ain't what we used to be. Because you know, we come from kings and queens. All right? Greatness. Okay? And if we didn't, then we never came from the kind of chattel slavery that was presented to us. So <laughs> we ain't what we going to be. We ain't what we want to be. We ain't what we ought to be. But thank God we ain't what we used to be. Interesting. Uh, this story, y'all, is slavery wealth hidden on Wall Street. A lot of y'all don't know that, and you just love Wall Street and the thing. You don't understand that. Well, let me go into this. The Civil War allowed the origins of this nation's wealth to be transformed and hidden. It moved from south to north. From owning slaves to owning land. From investing in the institution of slavery to investing in Wall Street stocks and bonds. Prior to the Civil War, nearly all businesses were directly or indirectly selling products and goods produced by slavery. The nation's textile, tobacco, shipping, insurance, cotton, sugar, and ironworks, building, furniture, and agriculture industries thrived. I want y'all to get that straight now, okay? I want you to hear that real good. The nation's textile, tobacco, shipping, insurance, cotton, sugar, ironworks, building, furniture, agriculture industries thrived off of slavery. Wall Street commodities were linked to and fluctuated with the rising and falling of the value of the slaves. In the 1840s, there were only one or two millionaires. John Astor, um, we got the Astor Hotel right down the street from me. With 16 million, one-fifth of the nation's wealth was the richest man in America. He derived his $16 million wealth from the businesses that he profited from slavery. The Civil War generated a rush of millionaires. 
merchants who were able to sell slave produced items, specifically food, clothing, military supplies, and weapons, reaped fantastic profits for the government and the contract. Others made fortune from the war over slavery by selling abroad. For instance, the king and queen of commodities, of course, remained cotton and tobacco. On the eve of the Civil War, England purchased approximately one billion pounds from the South, while the white, I mean, while, excuse me, while the Civil War had depressed cotton prices in the South to low um, of a three cent per pound. Cotton industries in England was paid as much as 48 cents per pound for the cotton. This sale produced approximately $500 for every white person in America. After the nation's navy began to blockade southern ports and harbors, the profit on a thousand bales of cotton with the fast delivery, that is, within two weeks, for one instance, it was about $250,000. See, now this is when we start talking about the money game. We start talking about the money game. See, we are in this. We, this is us. We were traded. We the money bank. So this is why reparations is so necessary. This is why this conversation has got to happen. Because this is what, this is what built the wealth of America. Your grandmama, your great, 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 great grandmama. And for me, my, okay, my great grandma was patient. So my great, great grandmama was a slave. My great grandmama was the daughter of a slave. Her name was Patience. And my grandmama, Viola Thompson, God bless y'all all, was the daughter of a slave. A, a, a woman was, was, a, was the granddaughter, I'm sorry, of a slave. You understand what I'm saying? So they were selling my people's stuff. Selling my ancestors. They from Kosciuszko, Mississippi. Um, and pop, uh, that's on my mama's side. On my daddy's side, they was in Missouri. Okay? And, of course, again, <clears throat> they all about the economy was my people, my ancestors. After the Civil War, the wealth was shifted to northern factories to profit from the pendant industrial revolution. The U.S. government gave millions of acres of land to the newly arriving European immigrants. Remember this now. They gave millions of uh, acres of land to the new, uh, newly arriving European immigrants and the privately owned railroad. That's why it gets me mad when I talk to these people and they go, well, my parents came over here and they had nothing. And we came over here. You came over here and the white people, in order to keep you abroad and to keep you separated from me, gave you free land when they took land from me. Hey, Mom. Somebody got to pay that bill. Somebody got to pay it. <laughs> the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad received free land that was equivalent of the size of the state of Texas. Within a few decades, railroads and their stock exchanges had nearly sold all of it in the average price of around $22 per acre. Now, look how long ago that was. You can imagine how much money that was back then. The Civil War produced new millionaires like the Vanderbilts. Uh, who's that? Boy, Anderson Cooper, your people. The Carnegies, like Carnegie Hall and all them people. Their newly acquired wealth was reinvested in railroad shipping oil, land, and Wall Street stocks. Slavery and cotton were no longer an investment king. Okay? You see how they did that? You see how they, how they uh, did that? And it still was on the back side of you and me. And our people, and so that's why we go into Washington, and that's why we got to come. We got to get our check. <laughs> There's no way around it. We got to get our check. All right. I know y'all gonna really get mad at me for this, but you know I. Really what can I say? It's the truth, Ruth. I'll see y'all in the next.